right, we just entered Kings Mountain State Park. Probably would have filmed a little bit so you could see it, but really you wouldn't have seen much because all you would have saw was hay. We've been getting hay blown over for the last few miles. But you have to go through Kings Mountain State Park to get to the National Battlefield. You don't have to. You can go around the other side. Okay, I didn't know the that. The side that we were coming from, you can go through it. Okay. See, I didn't know that. <laughs> I've only ever been one way. So. <laughs> so, we're currently going through the state park to head to the National Battlefield. And we should be there here in just a minute. And this is a South Carolina state park, yep. not a North Carolina one. Yeah, so, no stamp here. No stamp here for us. Unless South Carolina does a passport, but I don't know. We haven't looked into that. And here we are. That's a last minute thing. We didn't realize there was a big sign there. <laughs> Here is the visitor center at Kings Mountain National Battlefield. This might be a little shaky just because I don't have my little phone holder, but a lot of the national parks have little videos that are usually about 20, 25 minutes long where you can watch and hear the story of what, if it's a battlefield, what took place in the battlefield and depending on where you are it might be a different story but it's always good if you don't know the story to sit through and watch those so you can learn the whole story for us kind of hard to with the dogs but this was the scene of a revol revolutionary war and i have got burps right now so i'm sorry about that so i'm uh, going back to get andrea and the dogs right now and we're gonna go walk some of the trails all right to the battlefield trail this way and look it's the good rubber walking paths all right we're about to do it and this is telling you the little story about it with coral bark in the background but if you read one thing the tree the fighting tree to tree was sharp and short lasting only about one hour so both this battle and the battle of cowpens lasted approximately an hour so yeah so it's really weird that both the battle here and the battle at cowpens which is not too far away were both worn by the American militia and won in about an hour. That's that's really random. I never would have thought that. It's also pretty neat that they actually have a cell phone audio tour. So you can actually dial a number, hit a pound, I think it was 12, and you actually get an audio tour through your phone. Little offshoot of the trail is the marker of where Major William Chronicle uh, was killed. And here is a marker of in memory and the original marker right beside it from his death. This little map right here gives you an idea of how they were able to win this battle in about an hour. The, lo the loyalists were right there in the middle and they had militias from all the areas completely surrounding them and just all collapsed on them at one time. And really so far I could see how that could easily be done right here where the trail's going through is right almost in a gully between a larger hill and another and if this is where they're talking about the loyalists to be those militias could have been right above them the entire time and just easily just storm them at one time i told you the placement of king's mountain like i said it's very close to crowder's mountain state park they're probably what would you say maybe five miles apart all right, five miles apart. But yet, here at the National Battlefield, it is so much nicer. The forest has, a, it's, it's the same, but it looks different. The way that they also treated the areas and keep it upkept makes it a whole lot better and more enjoyable experience. And also the lots of shade and nice cool breeze, that helps too. I mean, just look at this vantage point. If that is the area where the British troops were and you're way up here, yeah, you've got a good vantage point on them. Is that a lot of the people that were in this particular militia used to like have hunting camps here, so they really knew the woods very well. Yeah, it was beaver hunters, rabbit. I can't remember what else that sign said back there, but I mean, this is also like swampy marshy area, so they were fine with going through the swamps and everything they knew the area and i mean it was basically the, the american militia knew where they were where the british troops didn't so that made it for a whole lot easier battle for them 
this was actually the first battle where the British forces faced long ring long rifle marksmen where they were basically in the battle with hunting weapons and it's never been faced before and they always thought that basically they weren't up for the match of a real soldier and they found out the hard way that no those guys were in it for the fight now this is pretty cool this is the site that president hoover did a celebration for the centennial of the battle of king's mountain and that was october 7th 1930 and I'm going to pan the camera around here a little bit so you can see. Because there in that picture you can see there was over 70,000 people here watching President Hoover give this recognition, recognition speech. And within one year of that speech, Congress passed a law and recognized this as a national military park. So, up to that point it wasn't, but uh, it's very nice to see people get involved and have that crown of recognition for the history of this country all right so now I have a question with that being the the Hoover monument for his speech being here they have photo photos to basically tell them this is where it actually took place if it was off a little bit so here's my question how did they know that that spot back there was the spot where William Chronicle died. Was there a treasure map that led them to it? Was there a story? There were no pictures. So I'm just curious about that. And here is a memorial marker to the three known African American patriots and others who participated in the Battle of Kings Mountain. There's some guys out here making us really look really bad. We've been lapped. I'm blaming it on Ari and Cor. Yeah, we're blaming it on Ari and Cor, but there's a lot of hills here. And coming around this is the monument for Kings Mountain Military Park. Once I get there a little bit closer, I can tell you about what all the monument says. All right, I'll start on this side. This day, October 1780, British forces commanded by Patrick Ferguson were met and totally defeated by Campbell Shelby, William Cleveland, and their heroic followers. This is the list of the men who perished for the American colonies during the battle. This is a marker in memory of the, patri the patriotic Americans who participated in the Battle of Kings Mountain and was erected by their descendants. And Ari wanted to go up here and say hello. And right here is where it marks the tide of the battle was turned for the American colonies. And this baby is being crazy today. Here's a memorial to Colonel Ashbury Coward, a soldier, a patriot, and an educator. And I think Ari's ready for a little rest break. And this little marker here tells you about how some people switched sides in the middle of the battle and that here you had some people facing their their neighbors and even their brothers. It's starting to sound a little bit like the Civil War happened during the Revolutionary War also. And... Hey look, we're in DC. No, that's another video. All right, so this monument was erected by the US government and it's pretty tall and is commemorate the last line this battle here was the turning point of the american revolution being behind that hay truck is taking its effects on andrea right now so more than likely it's gonna be getting me here in a little bit so she's sneezing now i'll be sneezing later so here it talks about major ferguson and his death he was shot eight times all at the same time and fell to the ground off his horse but his foot was still in its stirrups so actually the loyalists untangled him from the stirrups and propped him up to a tree out of the line of fire but he still passed away he was 36 years old been in the military for over 20 years in europe the west indies and north america and he was the best marksman in the british army and 
His defeat signified the end of the British hopes to win the war using American loyal to the crown. And he was the only Briton to fight here at Kings Mountain. And here is where he fell. So once they untangled him from his stirrup, it might have been that tree. It might have been one of those trees. One of the trees that's not here. Or a tree that's not even here anymore that they propped him up on. So here at the bottom of the hill, we saw this big pile of rocks and we went, what in the world is this? It's actually a memorial to Colonel Patrick Ferguson that was actually erected by the United States of America in token of the appreciation of the bonds of friendship and peace between the citizens of the British Empire. It was erected in 1930 and there is the seal of the crown. After the victory here at Kings Mountain, it took three weeks for news to reach Philadelphia and to one George Washington. They didn't have Twitter. I guess they didn't have Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. We couldn't photo snap it. <laughs> All right, we're in an undisclosed location, but you'll probably figure it out considering there's some stuff behind me. And yes, I have a new hat on. It's time to retire the Disney Cruise Line hat. But have you ever heard of geocaching? Well, for Andrew and myself, we used to do that a lot. Also to the point that we actually created a geocache before we moved to Southport. So we're actually on our home, old home grounds and we had to come by and check out the one that we actually made uh, five, years five years ago. And it's still here. So let me show you what all we've got in it. And it is a whale notebook. This is the name of it. It is called the Pixar Challenge. You have to watch the movie Toy Story to actually solve it. And see? And here's just all the people who have actually found it and their little notes they've left us over the years. Really neat. Last one, it was found 7-16-2017. And this is what I made it out of, a little ammo box. And all the goodies inside. If you're geocaching, thing is, if you take something out, you always want to leave something behind. So we got some glasses. We got two yo-yos, a golf ball, a penguin from Madagascar. Uh, and luckily we actually do have an aerial in here so it's just really neat that we haven't seen this thing in five years we have made a point not to come back since we put it here and it's still here and it's still going so it's great to see I'm now making a quick stop at Target to actually pick up something to go inside of Luxo to help display all of the pins we've gotten here recently I guess a side effect of not coming back to somewhere you left for so long is seeing things that you remember changing like the bowling alley that me and Andrea used to go to all the time and I played there when like and I bowled there all the time when I was little Andrea bowled there when she was little it's gone now there was a gas station where actually they worked on my truck whenever I was like 16 17 years old it's now a Wendy's it's just little things like that that's changed that we didn't realize till we we're driving right by and since we left, there's not many things that we've actually missed. I mean, it might be hard to say that to some people, but for us, that's the reality. Is like there's not much stuff we've actually missed since we left. But this place actually is. I still come here every time I come back to get one thing. And since Andrea has not been back in four years, she's getting something she hasn't had in a long time. So I'll show you. Tony's ice cream. Great milkshakes, better food. So for Andrea, it's a vanilla milkshake. And for me, you can't see it, but it's a cherry lemon sun drop. Those are the best. This is why we had to go to Target. This is gonna be our new pin wall for each of the pins we get at the national parks. So there's the cow pins, the Kings Mountain and Blue Ridge Parkway, the other cow pins, and also America's National Parks. So as we get them, we'll be adding them more to these court boards. It's the crazy light look. So pretty much tonight is it. We just finished eating our dinner. I'm actually making me some sleepy time tea. And I think we're going to watch House Bunny. So um, we did a lot these last few days. It's been an enjoyable weekend. Now the fun is over and i got to go to work. So thanks for joining us. And we'll see y'all soon. Oh yeah, I forgot about one other thing. Since work is getting away for the next couple days, 
go ahead and give you all an update so you can be looking forward to our next videos which is actually going to be taking place next weekend as soon as we get home we're going to be home for basically about 36 hours then we're hitting the road again and our adventures are going to be in Washington DC we're going up there to see some family and have another enjoyable weekend so make sure to check back for those videos soon